do a bit of seasonal crop picking on the on the land, and then they would be forced to move on. They were regularly attacked by the yeomanry. They were criminalised. They were forced into workhouses. They were arrested and charged very often for poaching or for trespass. By 1820, the law had been rewritten by Castle Ray as Home Secretary so that you could be executed for stealing a sheep or you could be transported to Australia on a prison hulk for stealing a, a handkerchief. That was one crime that you could you could be, um, you, you know, in uh, from seeing the movie of um, Oliver Twist that Fagin trains these street urchins to steal gentlemen's handkerchiefs just so they can be sold to the rag trade. You could be transported to Australia and die, really, in a, in a prison ship because the, the fatalities on those ships were enormous. Castle Ray was also responsible for the suppression of the Irish rebellion, the, the rebellion of the United Irishmen um, in the last decade of the um, 18th century during the Revolutionary War, the war with Napoleon. Um, again, thousands were killed. It was uh, a rerun, really, of Cromwell's massacres in Ireland. The Castlereagh attack on the Irish was noted for the for the a new invention. We, we associate the French Revolution and the Terror with the guillotine. Castlereagh invented a type of mobile gallows, uh, two poles that you could hang up and you could hang people. Um, in public um, very quickly on these mobile gallows and thousands of Irish people were uh, hanged in that way. Uh, the United Irishman Rebellion was led by one of the greatest figures in British political history, if you consider the British Isles, all of it geographically, um, Great Britain the and and uh, Era, up the other island, the island of Ireland, uh, Wolf Tone. Wolf Tone, very much the George Washington, if you like, of Ireland. His uh, rebellion, unlike Washington's rebellion, was brutally put down by the British army and Castlereagh and his mobile gallow. Another type of torture that was used in the suppression of the United Irishmen was pitch capping, which was a way of getting people to inform by pouring red hot tar on their scalp, allowing it to dry and then pulling it off. Finally, in 1801, it was Castlereagh who engineered the so-called Act of Union between uh, Ireland and Great Britain, by which the uh, Irish Parliament, the independent Irish Parliament, was simply bribed in order to vote to dissolve themselves and allow Ireland thereafter to be ruled from Westminster. Ireland thus really became the first colony of the new or modern British Empire. There were two British empires, really. The first one had been a settler empire in South Africa, Australia, New Zealand and North America. That had fallen to bits after the American Declaration of Independence, the War of Independence. Um, England was then very largely bankrupted. The second empire, which was to culminate in the annexation of India, and large parts of uh, Africa and uh, what's now called the New Commonwealth was founded uh, after this period. Ireland was the first colony and many of the tactics you saw else around the world were first imposed on Ireland. Castlereagh was also responsible for the Peterloo Massacre that we've discussed when the Manchester Yeomanry um, attacked the Blanketeers, the unemployed and dispossessed uh, hand loom weavers who had been ruined by the first uh, cotton factories of Manchester. Thousands of these people were thrown out of work and were just left to wander the country in a st semi-starved state, a mixture of rioting, begging, um, seasonal agricultural work, squatting, a bit of poaching, just keeping body and soul together really these they were known as the blanketeers up north and um, they ought they tried to organize themselves into a political movement for reform and when they did that at a public meeting in St Peter's Square in Manchester I think it was in 1818 
Um, they were attacked by the yeomanry and slaughtered. Wellington and Castlereagh also opposed any demands for parliamentary reform. They were determined to keep in place the old system of rotten boroughs, of pocket boroughs, whereby the landed aristocracy um, effectively appointed all the MPs uh, to the House of Commons and all political power resided in the non-elected uh, hereditary uh, House of Lords. Both Castlereagh and Wellington were in the House of Lords. Castlereagh's family uh, peerage was that of Lord Londonderry. The Londonderry title had been established in Tudor times when that land was simply stolen from the Irish tribal chieftains. Wellington fell from power in 1830 because of his inability really to suppress the swing riot. I'll come to that. It was a sort of uh, revolution in a way. Uh, but once he was out of uh, power in 1830, that cleared the way for the Great Reform Act of 1832. It was essentially the liberal middle classes that had agitated for that act. That was the act that abolished the rotten boroughs and the pocket boroughs and gave the wealthy people in the towns, the factory owners, the most skilled artisans, but also people like doctors and um, professional people, merchants uh, and so on. They they had the vote in the towns, uh, uh, in, including in the north. So the 1832 Reform Act, which Wellington had completely opposed, uh, and Castlereagh, of course, had massively opposed, um, shifted power slightly away from the Tory aristocracy, which uh, which was resent, represented by Wellington as prime minister, um, towards the liberal uh, town dwelling bourgeoisie, to use the that, that French term, the the city people or the the rich city people, the bourgeoisie. Um, that move was pretty decisive after eighteen thirty two. Now, for all the Liberals and for the Romantics, um, Castlereagh was a great, great hate figure. And there's a famous poem by Percy Shelley, who we've read before. We read Ozymandias, King of Kings, previously, when we were discussing the Romantic movement. There's also Shelley's famous poem, The Mask of Anarchy. I met murder on the way. He had the mask of Castlereagh. Then later in the poem, it's quite a lengthy poem, Shelley makes a, a direct call for a, an uprising. Ye who suffer woes untold, or to feel or to behold, your country bought and sold with a price of blood and gold, let a vast assembly be, and with great solemnity declare with measured words that ye are as God has made ye free. Be your strong and simple words, need to wound as sharp, sharpened swords. Let the fixed bayonet gleam with sharp desire to wet its bright point in English blood, looking keen as one for food. Let the horsemen's scimitars wheel and flash like sphereless stars thirsting to eclipse their burning in a sea of death and mourning. And that slaughter to the nation shall steam up like inspiration, eloquent, oracular, a volcano heard afar. And these words shall then become like oppression's thundered doom, ringing through each heart and brain, heard again and again and again and again, Rise like lions after slumber, in unvanquished number. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which sleep had fallen upon you. Ye are many, they are few. Mm -hmm.